Which one for the ones that don't deserve the big one? <laughs> uh huh. See, that's that's a Python Angelo design, huh? We're gonna we're gonna start when you're ready. We, we can start when I'm ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm but being say, ready. I'm just gonna say a few words. Oh, go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Go okay. Ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in a second, I'm gonna hand over to Python, who's gonna talk to us about uh, uh, the future of pinball. Now, one of the things that I think is fantastic about pinball is the way it exploits technology. And I think recently we've seen uh, developments in things like the sound and the light and the way the scores are displayed. But essentially, some elements of pinball have stayed the same, uh, primarily the silver ball and the flipper. And what we're going to get over the next hour or so is Python's personal view of the technology in pinball and, and where it needs to be going and his part in all that. So. Over to you, sir. I love your, I love his accent because it makes mine seem real good, I don't more have understandable. An I don't, I don't have even an accent. Even in the one that talks. Now. What do you mean you don't have an accent? You sound like a Brit. You don't like anyway. There's a reason for that. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I feel comfortable because then my accent is not so obvious. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I have that vampire Transylvanian accent. A anyway, getting back to um, the future of pinball and what I'm going to talk to you guys about, first of all, thank you for coming over. And um, as you know, I'm the master, as uh, Kevin said, of ad lib. Um, I don't need a teleprompter like Barack Obama or um, a, a, a little note thing. Uh, because I, my dad said people that don't lie don't have to remember what they said. So. You guys will notice that I'm totally politically incorrect and, and, and uh, uncensored. I don't have a filter between my brain and my mouth. So, uh, and, and I love you guys. That's, that's why you folks are here, because uh, you are uh, pinball lovers. You are salt of the earth people um, that love this great American art form of the, the silver ball um, that is controlled by the greatest mechanism in the universe, which is gravity. Uh, I don't know if, you, well, I don't have to tell you guys, you are pinball, uh, pinheads like me. Uh, so, so basically the greatest mechanism in a pinball machine is this planet. And that's why pinball is so magical. Um, now, let me start by saying this. I'm not gonna touch on the past, I'm just going to come into the present right here at the show. Um, I'm very proud. I don't know if the Predator people are here or they are up on the floor. They probably are up there. And there are a few other entities right now on this planet that are really, really trying hard. As I will in the next year uh, by bringing Pinball Circus and a couple of other games to you. Um, to move pinball into the future uh, with no hidden agendas and no financial agendas. Uh, it's very important to understand that um, my dad said this, if you cook a great pizza, you don't have to advertise it, but the word of mouth down the street, people will be lined up for blocks and money will come. Just make sure you, you know you're in America and you'll make the best pizza. If you do a drawing, make sure it's the best drawing. Whatever you do in life, you have a relationship with somebody. You know how to love them, how, how you do your best. They'll never leave you. Uh, they'll never, it, it will work out. Same thing with pinball. Um, all I tried over the years, and I worked with people that had the same philosophy, which always worked, never failed us, is trying to honestly build a game that entertained me, that I would like to play in six months. That's how I started. Pinbot, that's how I started everything I did. Even the drawings when I was a kid in school. I wanted a drawing that I'd be comfortable to hang up in my bedroom, in my room. And I noticed that if I was honest and I did a great job, everybody else wanted it in their room. And that was awesome. Um, now, about the future of pinball. One thing I discussed yesterday is the real sad state P 
pinball in terms of reliability and technology is in today. Nothing was, well, it was without a, a few small improvements, like maybe a little different alloy or a tweaking on a spring or some fancy new name added to it, you know, one of those the snake oil labels. Uh, Sincerity Williams and the Gottliebs and the old Stern and, and so on, nobody improved pinball. People just used milk this cow to death. That's why pinball was in trouble in the 90s and still is. Is nobody looked to, to really make a, a flipper, a new flipper, or a new, a new mechanism for hitting the ball. You know, it's, uh, Playing today, one of the old um, from the um, uh, what is the the guy that has the white with the bagatelle? It's called Pinball Museum, or no, has the bag, right? The right? Yes, uh, you look at at all the stuff that Harry Williams took it from their bagatelle and, and those wood rails to today. Everybody's still using the Harry Williams freaking mechanisms from the 1940s and 50s. So, what is the new millennium? Where are we? I mean, come on, we have a rover on Mars. <laughs> we, we have some great alloys, great new materials, great new technologies. I don't see them in the pinball game. Like Harry Williams who designed our torpedoes, magnetic torpedoes, for Second World War to, to sink the Japanese Navy because the contact torpedoes didn't work. It was like shooting them with ping pong balls. He developed them on the Chicago River behind, behind Williams on California Avenue in Chicago where I worked. Uh, I have the flat files that the Pentagon stored all those drawings. So, so getting back to, to this, where is in pinball today technology that's declassified, the greatest American technologies today implemented in pinball like Harry Williams did? Nowhere. So the first thing I'm going to do with George and um, James here, who by the way is in the room and he uh, makes the greatest pinball ramps that we shot gun set and, and I'm talking of plastic, not, not these things made out of cellophane that you buy from the southern entities. Pinball Inc. in Atlanta, he's going to also carry the new ball trough design which uh, uh, George upstairs finished which is a rotary gun barrel holds six balls you see them they're right there they take it from the drain lane and they with a, mo a little motor no coils okay very reliable uh, again the flippers that we're gonna put together the the posts because basically the pinball is a wrecking ball. You guys know that, right? The ball will be re-engineered. Re and what I would like to tell you guys, I can't talk too much because the patent is not secured yet and my engineers will kill me. But basically what I always dreamt of is a ball in a play field where you play with the same speed and power as the this, this self-destructive games we build at Williams. But you do not have to spend a fortune and spend every two weeks on a tech or a, a repair job to keep this uh, game going. You will not buy a car for $8,000 that you have to fix every two weeks, would you? Would any of you would, would do that? Well, why the hell are you doing it with pinball games? <laughs> right? Right? Okay, so the future of pinball. Pinball is going to be back with a vengeance, and you guys are going to be James's biggest customers. Is because you're not going to get ripped off and laughed at by, by this. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's just like the road technology. I'll make a, a sidebar here. I don't know if you guys know about the road surface called lizard skin that a guy in Texas invented in the 1960s, late 60s, early 70s, that the Audubon and a lot of countries use. And you do not, it's guaranteed for 30 years. Our roads are broken apart 
and replaced by union workers every three years. It's because of the unions. They don't want the technology here. Who's getting ripped off? People who have to change their shocks, their tires, their, you, you know, because bad roads wreck automobiles. They also are built with our tax money. Same thing with pinball. We have technologies that will improve. And you know what's funny? I don't have to be Harry Williams. All I have to do is go to Radio Shack, go and do some reading on what they use now from muscle wires to some of the alloys, right, and some of the things. Or, or James, his ramps, we shot guns at them and they don't shatter. <laughs> you know? And they sell ramps that will break in what? How many months? The, those lousy ramps they are selling to people that are like. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and it's not that, it's the frustration of paying money for something that you, you have then to take apart, get another one, put it in, the game not working if you have a location or you have a game room or you have a, child, a child's birthday and the game is down. After you already invested thousands of dollars and your love and joy for this pinball machine. So basically that's why it, video games did not kill pinball. People who made pinballs cheap to maximize their profits, cheap meaning with lousy materials. Okay, and I saw that happening at Williams when I left Williams, and that's why I left it. It was all about the bottom line and the money, not the pinball game and the, and the player anymore. Or designers trying to impress other designers, which is another evil thing that, that I think took pinball back. Now, getting back to the future, so the future of pinball will be new reliable mechs. Flippers, they will be more powerful, and balls, they will behave the same, but less destructive. Posts, that will not be rigid. Posts that will absorb energy without killing the ball in the action, but not making a hole in the play field and, and winding up in your drain, right? In the return line, in the drain. Uh, drop targets and targets that are much more exciting than this plastic little whatever they are called. The, the fixed targets. Fixed or, or drop targets. They, they look like those things the doctor puts, uh, I don't know, those, those dip, tongue depressors. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and you can put a little speed sticker on them. And yeah. I mean, they, they, they are 40 years old, even longer. I think they are from. Okay. So this, what will we have instead? I cannot tell you that yet. All I can tell you is it's coming. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I want, if this gets on the internet, which you were, or you guys, is I also want to put a little bug, and I want some competition. I know what I'm doing. And I'm giving away, a lot of people would say, man, he's giving away the farm, so to speak. No, I want competition. I want other people to think in the same way and look at the future. I look at things as a great opportunity. Crisis. I don't look at them as obstacles. He, my dad said, you go to a big wall, don't bang your head against it, you, don't bitch. Oh, there's a fucking wall in front of me. He goes, shut up, just climb up and jump or fly farther off that wall. Same thing here, we got some obstacles. I would like all the pinball enthusiasts uh, and and out there, young kids that see this, some of you guys there, the young kids, <laughs> um, try to, to come up with totally new stuff. We, we got to get rid of these dinosaurs. And, and this, I'm just talking about the mechs. No, I love the wood rails. And I like, you, you know, if you look at some of the wood rails up there, and they are more reliable than the games made last year. All right, in the, in the 90s. Um, so that's one part of the future of pinball. Coming up with new mechs that basically uh, perform the fundamental functions of, of pinball and uh, uh, gameplay of pinball. And um, then 
I'm going to go now to the other thing, which is called the architecture and the substance of pinball. As I fought for cabinets not to have those simple stencils, they look like cardboard boxes that they shipped, whatever, in a, in a shipyard, where now I'm so proud pinball has this full, uh, full color artwork on the cabinets. Too bad they are just Hollywood posters instead of being some cool, real cool stuff done by Yossi or done by Christensen or by Pat McMahon or, you, you know, some of the guys I, I love that do great original artwork for pinball. You, you have this, this Xerox machine Hollywood crap. Licenses. Yeah, licenses and also stuff that's been uh, doctored and manufactured in Hollywood on a cabinet. Uh, but, but anyway, it's, it's a long cry from, from those simple stencils. Uh, we have to look at cabinets. I'm, I'm working on a cabinet now that has running lights on the side of the cabinet. And the cabinet is interactive with a play and a whole room can experience it and your body's on the side. It's for the guy that has the Virtua pin or whatever. Okay. And he, uh, I'm, I'm finalizing his design this week with, with the inserts and LEDs right. running okay. down the side of the cabinet. The lights on the cabinet. And underneath. Like the, the thing is going to fly off like a UFO in the next second. Um, anyway, to, to enhance the experience. But besides that, what's wrong with a longer cabinet? That I'm going to bring in Chicago at the Pinball Expo. A longer cabinet that uh, playfield that comes on top of your head. Your head pops through a bubble. Flippers are in front of you. You got the flipper buttons on two joysticks, right? Your flippers are here, you have to defend your drop target teeth and your nose, right? Balls are flying around around your head on return ramps. And you see yourself in a mirror in front. You and the balls and the ramps are all in the back class. Right? Can you can you dig this? Can you see this? And it's it's a sit in virtual immersion pinball game. I'm I'm gonna work on that. Pinball Circus, you guys, I think, saw or played in Vegas at the Pinball Museum there. Uh, Hall of Fame, uh, yep. Team Arnold. Uh, the other one I want to talk about is you see this table here. It's longer and a little wider than a pinball game. It's the size of maybe one of those shuffle alleys with the pins, right? You guys are familiar with that game, right? The shuffle alley. Have a pinball game. That's up to here, okay, has the lower playfield, then another playfield, then another playfield, okay, has a stair thing, uh, like, like a Cirque du Soleil, mechanical circus, H has more possibilities for ramps, for mechanisms, the catapult, the ball. You have a, a larger universe. You don't have this thing, the same old thing, under the, it's, it limits you. So I think that also part of the change in the future would have to be in the cabinet. That it's not this blue black coffin on four metal legs. We might even, I, I was playing today at Bagatelle. Uh -huh. And I was showing uh, the guy from the Pinball Museum. Are you here? Charlie. Charlie, you here? No, he's upstairs. On how you can actually use one of your fingers, like a mandolin, and hit and the whole game moves. Those big wooden legs and a big wooden game was like a fine-tuned. He didn't know that. He never saw that. I go, you, you see, you toggle it. You didn't need Max to kick the ball. Because the whole thing reacts to, to your butt, to your, it dances with you. It feels every finger, every twitch you make. It's just like a good woman or man in bed, OK? Uh, or in the kitchen. Anyway, I, I have to, there's an audience here, I have to be careful. I, stay I stay I, f focused. Focused. Oh, focused. Your accent, man, here. OK. Um, so the cabinet, the format. Now let's get to the substance of pinball. If you guys look at Bakaru, at the old Bagatelles, at all the great pinball games, Matahari, 
I mean, all I did with the machine brought a pin button, all I did with my games, the amusement parks. As I looked at the history, I, I like to study the past and st study history because I'm a very cagey guy. I'm, I'm not going to go and design or paint or do something that was either not loved very much by people. I want to approach a subject that all people love, right? I mean, it stands to reason. So why would I go and choose characters that snarl at me, insult me, look at like this at me from the back class of the play field, okay? And they're pointing guns at me. I, no, I want to point the gun. I want to be behind of the gun. I want to be the bad guy, the badass. I want me and my woman not to be belittled and threatened, but to be part of the game. It's a miniature amusement park where I and the ball I control become part of the experience. Right now, you got, I won't, go, you guys know what I'm talking. They got, like in the middle of the play field, a guy that looks like this at you with his lip. Why would I put money in there to have a guy freaking eye me down? Are you going down the street in the worst neighborhood looking for a guy like that to interact with? Or are you looking for a nice club where you're going to meet some babes and some friendly guys? Hello? It's obvious, right? The same thing with a pinball machine. Subject matters have to go back to the basics, the all-American nice experiences where kids, the entire family, a man and his girlfriend, guys after work going for a drink, enjoy playing. Also, they don't have to be specialists and be sober, stone sought to play the game. I mean, if you get a buzz on a couple of beers, Excuse me, there are only two, uh, the Roger Sharp kids who are great players, champions, right? I don't build games for them. Right. They're specialists. It's like to Toyota, Honda, uh, Ford. You, you, when you, you, don't, you don't build a car for Mario Andretti. You, you build a car for an idiot like me, okay? You know, idiot proof. You, you, uh, the reason, uh, let me give you a great example getting to games, an analogy with a game. The reason baseball is very successful and very popular is because of softball. Did you ever think about it? It's because everybody can play softball, right? It's a bigger ball, you can be half blind and blind drunk, and swing their bat, and every once in a while you hit that side, you know? <laughs> it's, it's right there, it's big. Nobody plays in the park baseball, that's for the specialists. Same thing with pinball. A great pinball game, people told me, pinball, come on. It's, I go, what come on? It's for the first, you, it's an integral machine where the parts of the pinball game are parts of the robot. And also, uh, besides that, the flippers are his fingers. The eject holes are his eyes. It was all integrated. Artwork, music. It was not this, uh, what was the analogy we were discussing earlier? Uh, like a flea market of crap that you throw in a pinball game. Okay, we got some superheroes over here. And we're going to get this guy give us some sounds. That is, that, that's another death, death kiss for pinball. That was, uh, I mean, it was time and time repeated. And, and people know crap and no BS when they when see it. Kids or guys see it. That's why the game died in bars. It was not a game of pinball. It was all the crap that was put out there by people who just were pumping out crap to make the money. The quality of the pizza or the pinball game didn't matter anymore, okay? So for the future of pinball, we have to get back to the great basics right. of the sexiness of the game. Beautiful women, like Matahari, like the machine, like, oh, oh, I mean, go and see the, all, all the uh, wood rails, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just saw, uh, did you guys see Bally Ballerina? It's up at the Pinball Museum, right? 
Belly ballerina? Oh, you gotta see these babes in their dresses and plie plie and all the moves. Man, women at their best, right? Uh, or see some of the macho guys with the guys. The guy with the, the, the lumberjack with the axe and the, you, you know what I'm saying? All American themes. Pinball is an American game, an American cultural icon. It's not some freaking bad time story written by a Viking wizard or uh, some guy in Hollywood, okay? Or th those are for bad time stories for kids. Those are things, uh, some of the superheroes and the happy meal toys on playfields. And I'm sorry, you know, I know I'm gonna hurt some feelings, but that's not gonna bring pinball back in the mainstream American culture. And is there like a flash uh, in, a, in a frying pan? Uh, I don't think a lot of these games in five, 10 years, you won't even hear about, like, like you see the, the wood rails today from the old days. Um, World Fair or, and by the way, that's what inspired and formed me were, were the old games. That's why I did the amusement park themes and uh, the, the robots and you, the... You're talking about the 60s games then? Yeah, 60s, 50s, right. 40s, okay. and, and even some 80s, even some in the 90s. However, again, every time one of the designers like Trudeau, the real creative guys, not the copycats, I'm talking the crazy cats, okay. or Steve Rich or Trudeau, one of those guys tried to do something, you know, they were the, hey, you're taking too long. Or $300 more on the BOM, we cannot do circus. By the way, if you guys heard that the circus cost whatever they were exaggerating, those liars, yes, circus on the BOM was only $300 more. Okay, it was never tested, they never been. I talked about that yesterday. So in the future, whatever, uh, whoever will have the boss and will find the money guy with the vision, because he will not lose money, okay? The problem is today, we, we want to have the BOA and the beam counting and the penny pinching before we even have a concept or a game play. Let's let the creative guys, the Trudeaus, and the new kids in colleges, which I'm doing now, the college circuit, okay. with your... So Guy or guys. If I can summarize what you're saying so far, mm. is first of all, we've got to make the best pizza and not worry about how much it costs to make. No. And the best pizza is going to have reliable mechs in it. Absolutely. It's going to have great artwork that's friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're saying you're not very uh, impressed with licensed games with the Hollywood. No, no, that I'm not impressed. They are an anti cultural, anti American, anti pinball thing. Uh, Again, if you look at these characters, they all look made in Japan, made in, you, you know, you, you look at these plastic figures on the playfields, they, okay. you know what I'm saying. I understand yeah. that. So my question to you, Python, is, and you started answering it already, is who's going to be making these games? Well, I'm making, I'm making three of them in the next two years. If my cancer, uh, my battle against cancer okay. keeps going as well as it did, and if not, I make sure that I have an infrastructure that when I'm gone, you know, on my deathbed, these guys that already are very loyal, you know, again, there are people who I trust because their intentions are 100% genuine. Uh, they, they are not out for making a profit. And uh, oh, getting back to another thing, is I want to build pinball games that are under $5,000. There, there is no way there should, listen, if you make a profit of anywhere from $1,800 to $1,200 a game, is enough. Sure. And anybody that tells me that, you know, I won't go there, but some of these prices out there, even the limited edition, come on, that plaque is nothing but a paperweight. Okay, well, let, it's, let, let, you, let's, you know, let's, getting back to, no, but we have to concentrate on pinball. It has to be all those things, including a price that these folks can afford sure. to not just buy one game in 10 years, but buy five in 10 years. Right. Also, the, the, the barkeeper, the club, uh, the whatever, pinball club, 
um, the father and mother can afford to buy their sure. kid, okay? And the other thing is, when you get the game, it has to work out of the box, like a car, and it need a service call maybe 10 or 12 months from now, and not on major, okay. Um, where else were you going with this? Well, I was, was going to ask you, who would be your dream team? You've mentioned uh, some people, hmm. well, names that are familiar to us, like John Trudeau and Steve Ritchie. Oh, the dream Ed team? Washington. But if you were putting together your team, Mm -hmm. uh, of everyone you've ever known in For the future? Yeah, who would you put in? Oh, I'd like to get Joe Joe's back from the oh, grave. Right. Um, I would like to get uh, Bill Futzenruder from Incredible Technologies as a programmer, or Sam Zer who programmed Pinball Magic at Capcom uh -huh. with me. Uh, and Bri. I, I would like to get, the, in programming, those are the honest, uh, non-political, you, you know, killers. Um, in sounds, Jeff Powell, uh, Dan Forden, or Chris Graner. Chris Graner would be, what a genius. Yeah. He's the Mozart of pinball guys. I mean, he not, didn't just do pinball, he did many great games. Um, for an artist, oh my God, between Pat McMahon, John Yossi, uh, Dave Christensen, who is still alive in, yeah. Yeah, and, um, in Milwaukee, and still drinking beer and... Uh, um, okay being more honest than I am, and more insulting. <laughs> and um, one, one other thing is that you need on a team like that is model makers, like Gene Kleinschmidt and uh, uh, Mark Johnson right. and my, Mark Wheeler. Um, now, I'm unfamiliar with their work. Can you tell me what sort of thing they've done in the past? Uh, they basically built all the great mechs at Williams. Right. And they built some uh, they are gunsmiths too, some weapons for me and Ted Nugent and some of my friends. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So what, what's <laughs> the difference between a mechanical engineer like Joe Juice and, and these people? Well, for, first of all, Joe Juice came from an old European Hungarian uh, school. Hungarians and Germans are incredible mechanical engineers because they come uh, all the way from gymnasium, which is a mechanical gymnasium, is a school, a technical school like Lane Tech used to be in Chicago where some of our Adam Baum and our great engineers, even Harry Williams went to Lane Tech. Um, again, it comes from the, first the, their upbringing, and the other thing is this genius and passion. Uh, Joe Jones and I would be working till three in the morning on figuring out a new mech or a new ramp. Um, and then the, the, the model shop guys are guys that uh, even in childhood, they fix guns and they build their own spear guns. Uh, they are American tinkerers. The, the typical, uh, there are in America, Americans are awesome because they are tinkerers and innovators. Uh, Europeans, they live on their own laurels, all laurels, and they are mentally constipated. Nope, you, you know, listen. You're a European. Uh, wait, no, I'm not peeing right now. Okay. But I peed already <laughs> earlier. But. But uh, I was European, and thank God I came here young enough to become okay. American, and to have the audacity, and the <laughs> the Americans are really, really crazy. I mean, look at the stuff Americans did. Who in Europe would have had the audacity to take a bag of tell and mechanize it, or take a, a look? Look at the Queen of England. She's still going in that slow, ass big carriage. Did you see the American um, stagecoaches? Yeah. They are on buffalo hides with big wheels. Yeah. Did you ever see one? Yeah. It used to fly at 30 miles an hour over rocks right. with six horses that were changed every two miles. Only Americans are crazy enough to do that. They'll go, who we'll go from New York to LA right. in a carriage? <laughs> no, no. Right? No. Pulled by fucking 12 horses, we're gonna change every two miles in two weeks. And the Brits would go, we are out of here. You can have your independence, screw this. You shoot our uh, officers with squirrel guys, you guys are crazy, we are out of here. <laughs> then, wait, then another thing, take the Bagatelle, no European, Bagatelle was in Europe for hundreds of years, nobody mechanized it till the dildo since Roman times. <laughs> the Americans put a vibrator and the batteries in it, right? No, are we, are we understanding what I'm talking about, right? 
Same thing with the future of pinball. Okay. All it takes is sincerity boss to take pinball. Right here is 2013. Pinball right now is stuck in the 1990s, early 1990s. It has to be taken next year to on a jump. What it takes is being honest about it, which is very uncomfortable. It's risky financially. I mean, another thing about Americans in America and why I'm not European. I put everything on the line when I, did, I moved to Green Bay in 2003 to do redemption games. And I did, uh, you guys can that, check. That's for Baytech? Baytech I did for Chuck E. Cheese, uh -huh. uh, Chameleon Paradise, which is a, a chameleon. If you go to uh, a family entertainment center, and what happened is, let me tell you something real quick. How much time do we have? Got 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, this is worth to, to explain to you design and how I operate. I bought my nephew, uh, he wanted uh, a pet. Uh, my sister got them a parrot, the parrot almost bit their finger off. I think my niece's finger off, a gray African. But anyway, she has more money than brains sometimes. She, she, she uh, then got, anyway, they got this little chameleon, little lizards. They fucking escaped in the apartment. They never found them in their house. Um, but then things were smelling bad. They were somewhere <laughs> under a refrigerator or furniture or in a wall, dead, rotting away. So she said, well, you the family hunter. Why are you making fun of me? You get them some. So I take them to the pet store and I get this beautiful big Madagascar chameleon, mm -hmm. which now it's illegal. It's a protected species. And I get a box of crickets, and I'm holding this thing on my arm with his tail, and this, with his tongue goes, boom, gets one cricket, right? Boom, it was like holding a gun, a cricket gun. <laughs> Kids are pissing in their pants laughing. Next thing you know, they are there for an hour. The damn chameleon, the chameleon couldn't eat anymore. It was like burping. Yeah. But it was a great babysitter. I said, what a great game. So I came up with a game where you have this chameleon. You, and this is, I always write a poem, right? You guys know that about Pimbat, my poems before. So it goes like this, hit the lizard on the butt, make his sticky tongue shoot out. So he eats them pesty crickets, then he poops for you the tickets. <laughs> and you, the tongue would go, hit the cricket down, the target, which was a cricket, and tickets will come out of his ass and go <laughs> Well, the company said, you cannot have that. I go, I'm a non-call, pull my finger, <laughs> they love it. It's a party joke, kids love fart and party jokes. Well, they had meetings, whoa, they had freaking, oh man, they had meetings, they had scientists, look, you know this overanalyzing crap politically correct. The thing is, in arcades, top game, making money. The thing is, farting, the kids are laughing, everything is all right. Uh, but getting back to, to again, design. All the great games are out there. All we have to do is recognize them. Now I have another game that I'm going to do, that Eugene Jarvis and I are going to do for the kids. And it happened the same way. I, I basically watched an animal do something else to another animal, and I have a bigger game than, than Chameleon Paradise. And if I tell you, I'd have to kill you before we patent and we, we do the prototype. Now, getting back to our uh, docks here, to our uh, pinball farm, um, there are so many things. If you saw my flippers, they were cat fingers. In bad cats, they were cat's tails. In Pinball Circus, there are the flippers of the seals that are used, you know, you guys, some of you saw it. Uh, the elephant takes the ball and swings it with his trunk on a ramp. Um, basically, all, all the pinball mechanisms, in zingy bingy, the jets are on the woman's chest, the jet bumpers, yeah. and um, the guy's got a two ball lock up, you know, the man and the woman, right. and a bigger flipper. Right. and. And by the way, it's not pornographic. It's just that my pinball mechs are situated 
in strategic anatomical areas that fit perfectly. And, <laughs> and also, very into right, you got it. <laughs> I can tell you're going to have a lot of fun playing my games, <laughs> TV. And you and your friends and your woman, and, and it's also the first game that will have a man and female button, meaning player one, male, player two, female. So the sounds and the game will react and will be on the side of the woman. So it's for both sexes that was never done before. It has a lot. Of, and again, it has new things, which is very important. If you look at, I, uh, forget about Python's designs or my, you look at John Trudeau. I mean, John Trudeau, when I worked with him on a few games, Bugs Bunny, The Machine, John Trudeau at the same time was working on his designs, not just on mine, but him being a very good technical guy and, and choreographer, uh, he did a play field for, for me, for my opera. Well, he did um, uh, Judge Dredd, but he had a game that I hope he does at Stern. And I hope he does, or in the future, forever. And I hope, uh, uh, one thing, one message I would like to send to Gary Stern, let Mark Ritchie and John Trudeau and those guys, just let them run with the ball, man. Because they'll score touchdowns for you. But he had this game that was separated unevenly down the middle, almost like the California plates, right. the two plates, yeah. the, the tectonic. tectonic plates. It was awesome. One, one side of the game was, I think, red and one blue. I was helping him with the colors and the graphics. I still have sketches. I don't know if he does. But anyway, uh, he was trying to do the two worlds like Dante's Inferno, Hell, and Paradise, which I thought was really cool. Like, here you, your ball will go here, you know, Hell. Then we'll go there, you know. Over here, you know, like in heaven, you go in heaven, they give you wings and a harp. You go to hell, they give you horns and an accordion type thing. So same thing here, you know, on his playfield. It was awesome. So that's where, you, you know, design. Boy, this guy has been to hell. No, he knows hell because he actually, you know what my idea of hell is? If I design hell, hell would be a place where you go and according to your height, you are getting a stump you sit on. So if you're a tall guy, you get a shorter stump. If you're a short guy, you get a tall. So we all come at the same height, and it's all full of shit. And it comes right up to our lower lip when we are up on our toes like this. And shit comes right here. And everybody whispers, don't make any waves. <laughs> right? And on Sunday, the devil and your congressman come through on a speedboat water skiing. That's hell. It is a great game, is it? Anyway, so that's what we need in pinball. We need that kind of stuff. We don't need freaking Spider-Man 15, you know, and, well, yeah, I won't go there. I don't want to insult American heroes and ruin all this. You know, it's just, you heard about Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse divorcing in Florida. And because I worked at Disney, I, and the judge, the divorce judge in Orlando, Florida, said to Mickey Mouse, Mickey, you cannot divorce Minnie. You are an American institution. And he says, no, I want a divorce. He goes, well, I, I read here, you guys should see a marriage counselor or and what is this thing you, you say here that she's crazy? He goes, I didn't say she was crazy. I said she was fucking goofy. Uh. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Any questions? Any questions? You're going to have to shout because I can't say it out there. Outside of your designs, what's your favorite pinball? Uh, actually, my designs are not, some of my, my favorite pinball of all times um, is absolutely the capper of all pinball games. It is uh, first and mostly um, 
Yeah, without a question, Bakaru. Bakaru. It's an old wood rail. Great, simple. It's just like this bagatelle. Go and play it upstairs. It's unbelievable. Uh, and a horse kicking the cowboy in the ass in the back class. And by the way, bad cats with her hitting the, the cat. Pff, bad pussy, pff, bad. Anyway, and I don't know if you notice when her skirt goes up, there's a butterfly tattoo on her butt which in the 80s was who, every girl has a butterfly tattooed. Well, even worse stuff on her butt today. Um, Bakaru, number one. Number two game, oh, Black Knight, Steve Ritchie. Uh, some of the games Steve Ritchie and Eugene Jarvis are, are just genius, you know. Um, and uh, as far as visualicious, visualicious pinballs, the, the the Christensen games, Dave Christensen's, not just Mata Hari, all of them, even even the Elton John, Captain Fantastic, and and I don't know if you know about Big. Uh, there are kids here, Big D. Did you ever see the back class? Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I I love some even of the competition uh, games that Belly did with Greg Ferres and uh, uh, Kevin. Is Kevin here? Yep. In the building. Kevin? Yeah. Kevin and, and you and Greg and, and uh, Belly did uh, some games. Not, not the plagiarisms that, you, you know, I'm not talking about Barakora, not Barakora, some of the, you know what I'm talking about. You guys did some incredible stuff. Monster Bash, you did some great games over there uh, that were not just original, but they were visualicious and they were, you, you know, I could tell you guys had a great time. And management had no clue what you guys were doing. That's why you did great stuff at, uh, together. And um, the, uh, the one uh, uh, other game was Zap the Jap. I don't know that. It was totally politically racist, Second World War. Uh, and basically uh, because the two countries were villainizing each other, uh, the way the Muslims are villainizing us uh, today, we, we are pigs and we're all that shit. Uh, well, anyway, and so at that time, we were fighting the enemy differently. They were villainizing us, we were going right back. And, uh, uh, but we didn't do as bad as the enemy, but it was a zap. Uh, the reason I liked it was because everybody in America was fighting the war on this pinball machine. It's like right now you'd have a pinball game Zap the Taliban, or uh, I on my farm I have a target range for g shooting guns. I'm a lot like Ted Nugent, I kill and grill, uh, and I have Osama bin Laden without pants. You can shoot him in the genitals, and he's got a uh, he's got a bomb in one hand and a Koran in the other. And my neighbors think the the Islamists are going to have a fatwa contract on my life and. Ooh. But uh, all the police officers, firemen, and hunters in the area, they have to come over and shoot this guy in the nuts. You know, they got to see it. Uh, now, that would make a great pinball game, I think. <laughs> it's just like in Taxi. I don't know if you guys know the story. It's not, it's true. Um, I, you know, the three targets that um, uh, are in front in Taxi, where you shoot them down, they are luggage. They were not luggage. They're the three Kennedy brothers. You shoot them and then you take Maryland to the airport to go to Hollywood. <laughs> so there was a lot of history and political incorrectitude. True story. And Atola Khomeini was driving the cab. I have the, the drawings. Because a lot of Iranians were driving cabs in Chicago. Because they ran away from the revolution. And they were here. Uh, so, you know, a lot of my crap, my, my, my stuff came from real life, like bad cats or taxi. Uh, people wanted to know, why, what is Gorby doing there? I got a stupid KGB lost him in New York. He was shopping for Raiza, you know, on Fifth Avenue. Um, then, uh, you, you know, I could go on on that. But anyway, next question. Did I cover everything? <laughs> I, I left you guys speechless. <laughs> The what? So, so you said that you can make a pinball machine for under five thousand dollars. 
Absolutely. 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 So for $3,200, what do you expect? Hell, you can do, do pinball circus. You can do, you, you can do a pinball machine that's much, has much more crap on it. I mean, all you have to do is, I, I will have on my webpage sometime this summer the BOMO Pinball Circus or uh, the other game, the sit down game. Uh, look, I know how much the cabinet costs, the legs cost. The thing is, there is not a lot of R&D and new engineering involved. You, you know, it's basically going, in some cases they take the whole spice cabinet and they throw it in the goddamn thing. Getting a few spices, you get this just from the shelf, you get this wire, this and this. Um, even with the new costs, inflation, all that stuff, even if you put in Obamacare, <laughs> 30, 3,200 for a, B, no, uh, 3,000 for a BOM is, this is enough, <laughs> okay? Um, now, if you only do 50 games, that's not true. Or if you do only 1,000 games, like we did Pinball Magic, I know it comes to about $4,000. So, you sell it for 55, you make 15. All, all I'm saying is that there, there something stinks in Denmark. <laughs> you know, where I'm going with that, you know. Uh, some herrings washed ashore. <laughs> you, you know it's a Brit that's saying, right? So, what, what I'm gonna say to you now, just to draw things to a close, if people want to look inside your head, they'll get some idea of what's there if they go upstairs to your table, which is laid out with all sorts of yeah. wild drawings and things from your Yeah, so they can do that and come and you, you know, ask me questions. I'm going, I'm going uh, with James. We have to go to, uh, what's that place Shorties. called? Hmm? Shorties. Shorties. I got to see Shorty. Yeah. <laughs> then we go <laughs> into <laughs> lefties. <laughs> then we go. Well, I'm doing a real quick tour to see some of um, Seattle's, Seattle's pinball, great, great. you know, uh, Taj Mahal's. This town is incredible. You guys are incredible out here. Uh, I'm very humbled and very honored to be here. And uh, thank you for uh, listening to my Pythonian dissertation. And uh, again, um, I love you all. And uh, God loves pinball. And uh, Let's keep up the, the, the passion and the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.